This is a PK grill. The PK300, all new from PK Grills. This is a Weber Master Touch. Which one should you buy? The reality is both of these grills are excellent grills. There's some pretty big differences we should discuss. So let's look through them, let's talk about them, and help you decide which is better, the all new PK300 or the Weber Kettle. And that's gonna be cherry. Well, that pork butt is cooking, and rather than sit outside the entire day, I figured it'd be a good day to come in, go over the stats, and give you kind of the rundown on the Weber kettle versus the PK. Let's just start with the basics. Overall size. Both grills stand about equally as tall. It should be noted here that this Weber kettle master touch is actually a little bit taller because of taller wheels, and so it's going to be taller than your standard Weber kettle and the premium Weber kettle. However, it is still the same grill, and it's not much of a difference in, in all honesty. All right, build quality. Both grills are made very well, and the data is already in. Plenty of people have maintained and passed down both of these grills for decades, in some cases 50 years, so build quality is not a concern. Sure, the PK is beefier in design and has thicker components, but overall the Webers have lasted folks for decades as well. All right, venting. I will say, both of these grills have great venting systems. They're different in design, they're different in location, and they're different in numbers, but they both work very well. So total with the Weber, one on top, one on bottom. The venting on the Weber, it's a one-touch system that has a handle, and it controls the slider on the bottom of the Weber. And it's the opening controller that has the three P-shaped vents. And then on top, the Weber has a single three-hole rotating or sliding vent for fine-tuning airflow. Depending on who you talk to, some people will say just leave the bottom wide open and control the top. Other people will say leave the, you know, 50-50 bottom and top. You'll figure out what works for you. I personally like just cracking the bottom and then managing the top. These two vents do an excellent job in this kettle design of managing airflow, and you can really dial in your heat, and it will hold temperature very well. Now, previously with the PK, they had a slider system for the vents, and they weren't very popular. They worked, but they would get a little, little tricky to use. Um, they would get hung up. They were kind of, they didn't slide very well. With this new, all new PK 300, they have updated these vents with a, um, a handle and a rotator, and you can really, in these little hash marks, you can really dial in your vents. And the better thing, in my opinion, on the PK is you get two of these on the bottom and two of these on the top. So. Depending on how you have your stuff arranged or how you want to work your airflow, with four vents on this rectangular system, one on each corner essentially, you really can dial in the, the airflow and dial in the heat just the way you want it. Okay, so this is where things get different. Cooking surface area. Now this is a big one that maybe I'm blowing out of proportion. You guys let me know down below. They seem similar, but they're very different. So for example, both are roughly 22 and a half to 23 inches, right? And that's what they say as far as grilling space when you go on the website. So it's a done deal, right? No. The PK has this rectangular design and the Weber has a circular design. Because of this, when you factor in room to move coals for indirect heat, the PK gets cramped much faster and you nearly don't have the room for a full pack of brisket. Could it be done? Sure. But with more babysitting and rotating and really paying close attention to your heat versus a kettle where you can just set the brisket on the side, set a set of coals on the other side, and you're pretty much good to go. So while they're both 22 to 23 inches, that usefulness of 22 to 23 inches gets very different based on the just the simple fact that one is round and one is a rectangle. It really changes your arrangements and abilities when it comes to cooking. All right, the thermometer. Now who cares about a thermometer, right? Well, it's worth mentioning. So the Weber on this Master Touch version, and I believe the premium, if I'm not mistaken, come with this standard analog thermometer. When smoking over indirect heat away from the coals, you need to move the lid around to get to where the smoke is escaping over the meat through the vent. Well, this leaves the factory temp gauge directly over the hot coals, giving you a skewed idea of where your ambient temperatures actually are. Now on the PK, on the other hand, the PK does not come with a thermometer. 
but it does come with this factory drilled rubber grommet hole. You can just pop that rubber grommet out. You can slide in a thermometer there, an analog thermometer. And I did some testing with some cheaper ones. They're not gonna fit correctly. What it's designed for specifically is the Tell True thermometer, which are great thermometers but they run 40 to $50 a pop, and this grill's already over $500, almost $600, depending on when you get it, so. Come on. All right, cleaning the grill. This is where the Weber really shines. The One Touch system, it's fantastic. You literally are done cleaning it with one hand in a trash bag in a matter of 60 seconds, and you can pop that thing back on and continue cooking. Now with a PK on the other hand, it requires removing both of the grill grates, the bottom vent covers, and then using either a shop vac to suck out the ash, and then you still need to transfer that from your shop vac into a trash bag, and it's a messy process for the fabric filter on your shop vac, it needs to be cleaned when you're done. You could in theory just lift the PK capsule up off of the body and flip it over into the trash, but still it's gonna be messy, dusty, ashy everywhere. And the reality is if I was lazy last time I cooked and didn't empty my ash out or I let my coals cool down and then forgot about them, when I go to cook that next time, I don't wanna spend the first 20 minutes cleaning my grill. That's where the Weber, again, it just really shines. You can do the one touch system, dump it and carry on. All right, accessories. There are accessories for both of these grills, and both of these grills have some cool accessories you can just go a little wild with. But I think everybody in the room can agree that the Weber kettle is gonna be the accessory king. There's so many companies making third-party accessories for Weber kettles, everything from slow and sears to indirect heat plates to griddle tops, all the way to spider grills making the very cool Venom product, which is a no-drill, easy to install, device that turns your Weber kettle into an air controlled, essentially set it and forget it type system where you set the temperature on your phone, pop in the probes, and the system will do all the work for you and keep it at a steady temp, adding airflow when needed. And then Spider also makes the pellet grill conversion where you can attach this in just a few minutes without any drilling on your device. And it's a pellet hopper, a fan system, and a thermometer that basically turns your Weber kettle into a full on pellet grill. Why don't I think of these things? Anyway, when it comes to accessories, Weber kettle is king. The PK does have some, but they're high priced and there's not a lot of variety in PK accessories. All right, so country of manufacture. To start things off, just throw it right out there. Yes, PK grills are made in China. Now there was a time, and many people still think they are made in America, but they're not. There was a time from the 1950s when they started up until either the 90s or early 2000s, they did make them in America. However, the, the company was bought by a guy and he made the company very corporate outsourcing manufacturing to China and it has not returned to the U.S. since then. Now, Weber, on the other hand, to this day, you can go on their website and they say that they make all their grills right here in America. And if you think about it, a big box store mass producing grills for everybody at every price point and is still having a fantastic grill that's $200 or less, um, I feel like Weber's kind of killing it here. And if PK outsourced manufacturing to cut back on costs like most companies do, well, we'll touch on that when we get to price. So that leads us to price. Okay, it's pretty simple here. For $250, you get a very quality grill at the top tier Weber Kettle Master Touch with all the bells and whistles like warming racks, beefier grill grates, thermometers, and a taller design. Now with the PK300, you're still getting a very quality grill, but without a thermometer, a warming rack, and over $500. I have seen them at $450 on sale. So twice as much money, but still outsourced to China for manufacturing. It just doesn't add up for me, but I'm also not a suit or an accountant, so there's that. All right, final verdict. As you already know, I've said it many times, they're both great. They can sear, they can smoke, hot and fast, low and slow. They have classic designs and they both will last you the ability to hand them down to your grandkids. Facts. However, if I had to go with one of them, I'm gonna pick the Weber kettle over the PK due to this price, ease of cleaning, and Weber's still manufacturing their grills right here in the US. You can get the Weber Kettle Master Touch for $250 or a PK for $500. Choice is yours. I've laid out what I think about it. At the end of the day, ignore what I'm saying. Go out there, get what works for you, make great food, spend time with your family, and we'll talk to you next time.